Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello. How are you doing, John? Oh, good, Art. We've got something special for everybody today. Um, as you know, we have been talking to various people about the age, living in the age of COVID-19. And uh, one of our conversations recently was with John Mariani. Mm -hmm. And he is, of course, a food and travel writer. And he has traveled the world extensively. And uh, he hasn't traveled <laughs> in yeah. nine months. Yeah, he's, just, he's just doing food and wine right now. <laughs> and he's doing a little too much food and wine, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, John, as you will recall, John has said that uh, he would recommend not getting on an airplane. Last thing he wants wants to do, even though it's really his profession. And uh, he recommends that people want to travel. There's a great mm. place everywhere in the United States. Take a day trip by car, stay overnight. Uh, so uh, pretty good advice. And it makes sense based on everything you hear in the news. However, one of our members, uh, I call them members, one of our view regular viewers, people who are uh, celebrating their second yeah, act. The, the, um, the, the membership is you have to make 50. <laughs> <laughs> the membership is you just have to turn you on have, YouTube. You have to really, live right. But, <laughs> but anyway, one of our uh, correspondents, members, whatever you want to call it, uh, has recently traveled by air. Really? And, and she's the first person that I've heard about that's taken an airplane in nine months. So <laughs> I want to introduce her. Uh, her name is Libby Perry. Libby, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. And Libby, you and your family live in uh, Southern California in Orange County, uh, uh, correct? Yes, we're in Mission Viejo. Yeah. Now, you, what was your reason for getting on it to an airplane? Well, we count ourselves lucky that our second daughter was able to go away to college for her freshman year. Uh -huh. Not all the students are having that opportunity. So we all, the whole family, flew out. To South Carolina to deliver her to school. And you said the whole, mom so... could make her bed for the first time and meet <laughs> the roommate. Yes. All those sentimental activities. Yes. yes. You said the whole family. How many of you actually flew out there? Four of us. Ah, okay. And mm -hmm. you left your uh, teenage son home to cause trouble. Yes. <laughs> He's not interested in decorating bedrooms. Yeah. He didn't care about South Carolina. But now that's truly a cross country trip from Orange County, Southern California to. Uh, what is it, Columbia, South Carolina? It is. And right if I'm the, not mistaken, Columbia is the capital. Of it is. South it's Carolina. right smack in the center of the state. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's the heart of Dixie, as I recall. <laughs> so I'm also uh, I'm I'm a neighbor also in Orange County. Um, what was it like showing up at John Wayne? Was it crowded? Uh, was it like you're used to being when you're well, there? Well, my husband and I travel quite frequently out of John Wayne, or we did, and um, in comparison the place was empty, mm, wow. literally nobody there. There was yeah. one person in front of me to uh, go through security and oh. they only had um, one line of security open. So I didn't have to wait at all. Uh, it took about five minutes once we checked our bags to get through security. And wow. um, once we passed through and we got to our gate, um, and for those that travel frequently, the Starbucks line was really empty. <laughs> really? Starbucks? Yeah. I'm going, I'm going to get to fly just for that because it was always so crowded. <laughs> it, was, it was the speediest Starbucks ever. But no, the airport itself is always um, a nice, convenient airport, Orange County. It's small and, and we consider it uh, easy and quick. But this was unbelievably easy and quick. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think the telling, the telling metric is Starbucks, right? It, it sure is. Every airport has a Starbucks or two, and every is. Starbucks is always a line. You know, yes. even in a small airport like John Wayne. Yes. Oh. So here, here's how we decide what time to leave for the airport. My husband wants to get there and run onto the plane without having any time to sit down, <laughs> and I want to have a leisurely entrance and get a Starbucks and sit in the lookout at the airplanes before we are called to our plane. <laughs> so, now, so in, 
the way you explained yeah. it is that you sort of had the best of both worlds. He ran we did. to get there, <laughs> and then you got uh, to be relaxed. Yeah, it was a nice. It was a nice arrival. Yeah. So the hallways were were empty essentially. The the big uh, waiting hallways. The the mm -hmm. what do they call them? The the areas. You know the. Mm -hmm. uh, the terminal. Terminal B, Terminal yes. C, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, was the plane on time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You flew what airline? We flew Southwest. Now, it, since you said you've, uh, uh, you're a frequent flyers, mm -hmm. uh, you've flown other airlines in the past. Have you flown recently during the, or in the last nine months during the COVID uh, uh, pandemic? I did, but it's only been on Southwest. Okay. Uh, so I, we so you, haven't tried another airline. Yeah. yeah because they uh, all vary we, in, in, in uh, the seating capacity and things like that. So what was the boarding? Uh, what was the boarding and seating capacity like? Um, well, they've changed quite a few things for COVID. Um, so now they don't want people standing in lines and crowding each other. So they call you up in groups of um, five to ten instead yeah. of um, thirty at a time. Yep. Yep. And um, they, t they seem to be taking their time doing it as well. And then um, once we got on the airplane, they are only seating um, two thirds of the plane. So every middle seat on both sides of the plane was empty. Well, that's nice. That's <laughs> something <laughs> in other times you would kill for. <laughs> right? And now they require it, huh? Yeah. And, yeah. and what about masking? Was, uh, was that a requirement? Uh, yes, it was it was not only a requirement, but they announced how um, they did the description of the mask that they wanted you to wear. No longer can you just tie a bandana around your face. Oh. They want something that tightly covers your nose and your mouth and stays on for the duration of the flight. Well, if you didn't show up with one of those at the airport, what would you do? You'd have. To, did they have a store or something where you could go buy them? Or? Um, I don't know about a store, but I believe that the stewardess said that she would offer you one if you didn't oh, have one nice. that met their requirements. Yeah, that's smart. And did everybody yeah. seem to cooperate with that without uh, 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 no drama? question? Okay. No question. Every single person had their mask on, and um, I. They did tell you you were allowed to remove it to eat or drink, but then you must immediately put it back on. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but you know, it's not like they're serving fabulous meals anymore. So, <laughs> so yeah, I saw everybody with their mask on. That has, virtually nothing, to, the entire that has flight. nothing to do with COVID, though. They started. No. <laughs> they, they started that special service a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, question for you: Did uh, uh, did you use the facilities? Uh, uh, if people wanted to use the, the restrooms, what was that? Was that experience different? Um, no, that was similar. Um, they have um, hand sanitizer available. Um, and if, I brought my own Clorox wipes and I wiped down um, my tray table and my armrests before I got comfortable. Um, but um, otherwise, the flight was very similar. They, they were limiting their service. So they brought you um, just a, a cup of water and some pretzels and peanuts, um, and that was that was it for the service. They the stewardesses were not up and down the aisles as often as they usually are. Yeah. Did you you have anybody you notice coughing or doing anything suspicious that might make you uh, uh, worried about getting the virus? Um. I did not hear any coughing or anybody sick on the plane. I imagine in these times, people who are sick are not, are really not traveling. Yeah, um, uh, let's hope not. Yeah, but um, no, nothing made me feel uncomfortable. I actually was surprised at how I felt like I did not touch a lot of surfaces. Once I sat down, um, and I had Cloroxed my little area and my daughter had Cloroxed her little area. Um, I got out my book and, and was, you know, I didn't have to get up and down and I didn't really touch anything else. So I, I felt like um, I was not exposed 
to as many surfaces as I feared I might have been. And did you, uh, I'm sorry, did you John, get the, oh, I'm sorry, go yeah. ahead. Uh, in the 90s, I used to fly um, for a period of two years, literally five uh, uh, days a week. I would leave uh, uh, on a flight from Orange County to uh, a city and then another. Every day I'd be in a different city and then Friday night or Saturday I would come home. And during that period of time, they, uh, they worked on, uh, on leading up to the air filtration systems. I know that we had a lot of issues with fumes and things like that, and that the HEPA filters were put in and the air exchange was increased so they had more fresh air in. What was mm -hmm. the... Was was that an issue? Did, uh, did you feel comfortable with the air exchange there? So um, I'm not really don't have all the latest information on how they filter their air. Uh, but one thing that my family and I noticed was that the air, and maybe because there were less bodies in the plane, was very cold. It kept us um, cool the entire flight and. Um, you know how sometimes when you're loading and unloading on the airplane, you can get, you know, steamed up and there's bodies all, you know, crammed in the walkway. Um, we didn't have any of that. Um, it, it felt like you were breathing fresh, cold air most of the time. Did they, did the airlines tell you uh, or, or tout, uh, as I would think if they did it, they would be happy to tell you about it, tout how they clean their, the, the plans between and what trouble they go to. There's, the, I haven't heard anything about what they're doing to make the, clean, the, the actual plane, inside of the plane, clean. Yes. Um, well, they brag about it on their websites, so I, I don't have that information oh. handy. But... Um, on one of our stops on our way home, we did have to um, stay on the plane while they um, offloaded some of the passengers and loaded more passengers on. And um, they did have staff come in and wipe down every seat and every tray table with a um, bottle of disinfectant, and um, which I don't recall them doing pre-COVID. Oh, no, definitely so, um they were, and they had us wait when we had to stay on the plane. They had us wait in the back of the plane until that cleaning crew had done the front half, and then we were allowed to move up and choose a new seat in the front of the plane. So yeah. after they had cleaned that area, and then they That's continued cleaning the back. So I think they're being a lot more um, detail uh, oriented now. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But you were you you actually made a stopover then, on your way to your final destination. Yes. So what yes, was that? So, what was that terminal like? And about what time of day were you there? Well, on the way to South Carolina, we stopped in Nashville, and we had an unfortunately long layover for about three hours. Mm. And um, that airport was also very uncrowded. There really? were um, not a lot of people waiting at the gates. Um, there were several restaurants open um, with to-go food available, so we um, got some food and, and ate it by our gate. Um, but again, not crowded at all. And, and you, uh, you, I remember you uh, you sent us video of the uh, walkway, the mm -hmm. uh, people mover. Yeah. Uh, and it it looked empty. Yeah. And as you went down the people mover, you can see what gates to the left, gates to the mm -hmm. right. What did, what was mm -hmm. that? Did, did the whole airport look empty? Well, so in that wing of the Southwest wing that we were in, um, it seemed to me that they were using maybe 75% of the gates. Um, not all of the gates um, had signs and, and information up for flights, but um Again, it's just, it's not busy. <laughs> it's yeah. not a lot of people, yeah. not a lot of people flying. So, but we felt comfortable. You were never in a crowd. You were never, um, you know, up close and personal with anybody but your family. So, um, you know, when we talked about driving to South Carolina and yes. spending three nights in different hotels and different restaurants and stopping at gas stations and that kind of thing. Um, I think we made the right choice um, doing a one day worth of 
air travel. And I think we were exposed to a lot less potential um, germs that way. Yeah, interesting. I, I've flown in and out of Nashville quite a bit on American Airlines. And years ago, American made it a hub, uh, you know, transfer mm -hmm. hub. And then all the other airlines followed. Nashville just grew in size. Nashville was actually smaller at one time than Orange County. Oh, uh, wow. Oh, yeah, tremendously. It was just a little dinky airport. But uh, it grew into a, a regional hub. And uh, mm -hmm. the last time I was in Nashville was over 20 years ago, but it was crowded. It was like a smaller version of LAX. Okay. So if, if you have been in Nashville and it wasn't crowded, that's amazing because it's a major yeah. hub for what they call the Mid-South, uh, you okay. know, 300 miles in every direction. Okay, if you're going to tell uh, well, war Mike, stories, John, if you're going to tell war, if John's going to tell war stories, okay, <laughs> I remember when, okay, John Wayne was a lot different. And you used yes. to just be able to walk up. You talk about your husband. You you walk up, you park real nearby, you run up to right. it, right on a tarmac to an airplane that had a smile on its nose, and you yeah. climbed up the stairs, and you paid yeah. on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, John. We're even. Yeah. Speaking of husbands, uh, your husband, Todd's a big guy. Did he have any more room where the seats moved apart in the airplane? Did he have more or less room than he would have had otherwise? Well, um, he didn't have anybody sitting next to him. So that's, that's a benefit. Yeah, there's that. Um, but I don't think that they've adjusted the locations of the seats at all. Oh, okay. they haven't. I don't think they've gone that far. That's no. too bad, considering how they've limited the number of passengers. They ought to make it more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you get a look but, at first class? What was uh, were there people in first class? Was it crowded? Uh, there is no first class on Southwest. Oh, excuse me, forgive me. No, <laughs> excuse, excuse me, John. Everybody is first class. Oh, on yes. that's what they would have have you know. Yeah. But let me ask you a question. So, uh, uh, so you you went because you had to deliver your daughter uh, to school, and mm -hmm. um, I'm not getting the sense that while you felt comfortable and safe that you would hop on another plane just to go visit somebody or to go to a destination or to do business, but that you felt comfortable, but it's not something that you're ready to, to, to resume. You, you used to say you used to fly quite frequently. Right? Um, yes, and, and a lot of our recreational travel has been canceled. Um, we had several business trips scheduled for this fall. They've all been canceled. And um, so we won't be flying again, I don't think, until, well, the girls will come home in November, and that's probably about it. Yeah. Um, but if somebody offered me a fabulous luxury vacation, I would fly. <laughs> Unfortunately, you, you can't, it can't be to Paris. <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't want us yet. Yeah. No, no. So uh, I, I, I was curious. Was there any, you know, New York? I was just hearing on the news today. New York has still has a 14-day quarantine, and you know, it's a always a political football. Whether how much, who gets it, and who doesn't, and whatever. Was yeah. there any requirements that you and uh, your daughters or anybody in the family needed to do to get to South Carolina? Yeah, uh, COVID testing or anything like that. Yes, the the state itself was not restricting us in any way or had any requirements. But my daughter's university required that she have a test and that the results be submitted um, just within several days of her arrival. Um, wow. So she did do that. She went and and had a, a nasal swab done, and it came back negative about um, four days before we left. And so she was cleared to move in, um, which is, you know, almost you question if you're then getting on an airplane and flying across the country um, because things could change between five days prior and all your travel. Um, but her university is being extra thorough and they have an on-campus um, testing facility and uh, that's free to students. And um, so they've been pretty thorough with their with their on campus testing. That's good. And they, so they're doing. They have in in person classes uh, at the 
University of South Carolina, is it? At the University of South Carolina, they are doing a hybrid um, of in-person and online classes. And so out of, out of her five classes, my daughter has um, two in person. One of them is her chemistry laboratory class. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is a um, welcome to school type of class called University 101. And they're meeting outside at the rec center. Oh, oh, this is, this cool. is her first year. Okay. She's a freshman. Okay, so yeah. ac actually, uh, if you would, I think we'd probably want to hear when she comes home for a holiday, how her first year, her uh, first term was in COVID. Uh, I have a niece who just started at, uh, I think, at UC Santa Barbara, and she's living on campus, or she's got two other roommates. So I think yeah. it's going to be very interesting from the time that uh, our whole generation went to school a lot of us commuted, but even those that were on campus yeah. had a whole different experience. Oh, sure. yeah. yeah, it really will be different. And that was one of the big debates. Um, do you even send your child to college in 2020 as a freshman? Wow. Um, is it worth it? Is it worth it to pay for online classes? And um, in our situation, we have an older daughter who's a senior in college and good or bad, we're comparing the freshman year experiences. True. And um, so it'll be really interesting when they both come home uh, for Christmas break to hear and to have them tell their stories and, and, and compare. Now, the blessing is that the freshman in college now has never been a freshman in college before. So <laughs> she doesn't have anything to compare it to. And she's probably in week one right now, having a phenomenal experience mm. and and doesn't know what to be disappointed that she's missing. So you didn't well, get, hope, you didn't get a letter. She has a phenomenal experience with her mask on. You didn't get a yeah. letter. You didn't get a letter saying hello, mother, hello, father. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. Well, the, uh, let me. This has been wonderful um, reportage reporting. <laughs> this is great to to have somebody who is actually flown. Um, during the age of COVID-19. Tell us what it's like. And, and uh, you know what? It doesn't sound half bad. It sounds like the airlines, like, a, like the restaurants, mm -hmm. have gotten it together. They're doing the best they can with whatever the guidelines are that are put out there. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's a personal decision whether you want to take the risk or wh how big you think the risk is. Yeah. Um, but it, it, I, I love your analysis that you guys made the right choice for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, that's I, I have to. I have to tell you that uh, I have a daughter about your age, and uh, I, your experience makes me want to have a a child of college age so I could go fly with them and drop them <laughs> off at campus. <laughs> well, you probably have a granddaughter that. Well, you did. You I have did. a niece. I have a granddaughter who's twenty-seven. Yeah. Okay. A little overcome. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let me thank you so much. Uh, this has really been helpful to a lot of people who will view this. It's terrific. Um, and it's kind of a historical record, I guess. Of, Isn't it? Yeah. 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 So thank you for sharing this. And um, I hope that uh, everybody gets to watch on Celebrating Act Two uh, on YouTube. Hmm. And, uh, and, 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 and a few thousand of Libby's closest friends, uh, many, of, <laughs> many of whom are facing the same issue of do I or yes. don't I, yeah. A, take the kids to college, and B, why? Yeah. yeah. And just remember, as we sign off, that Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.